So in my last video, I talked about Marx and some of the areas where I agree and disagree with him. I guess while I'm on the subject, I guess I want to touch on what, for me, uh, is the most significant of his part of his philosophy. Yeah, like I, like I said, I don't necessarily agree with uh, with socialism as an economic system, at least in the sense that he had in mind. But um, I remember in college uh, when in one of my sociology classes when we were studying Marx uh, and it was I had read Marx briefly in high school but it was really in um, the sociology class that I really got to uh, know his philosophy his sort of philosophy in a little more detail uh, his what's really struck a chord with me and has kind of um, been become more profound to me uh, since then have, having uh, graduated from college and gone out into the work world, is his concept of alienation. Um, and basically, uh, I think it's, the basic to his concept of alienation is that the capitalist system, um, but uh, basically, basically turns workers into cogs in the machine where they're sort of alienated from their, their natural Creativity and talents, and um, uh, and their, and uh, and sort of their natural potential, and sort of molded to fit this sort of uh, industrial mach machinery of uh, of production, and um, first to conform to uh, the uh, to the type of the production that the capitalist wants them to, to do rather than what uh, is really their own inner potential. Um, and so I, mean, I think that uh, in, in Marx's famous saying uh, from, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs, that uh, from each according to his ability part I think is part of what he's talking about with with alien, I think he was talking partly about alienation in that is the idea that um, we're often sort of cut off from our uh, from our talents by by a, a work world that only cares about you know what we can do that it can make someone else money. Um, and so, you know, uh, there's there's a few people who who are really able to do what they love for a living and there's a lot of the rest of us who are stuck uh, doing the you know, you know, working nine to five at some uh, at some at some warehouse or or behind a desk or you know or what have you uh, do, doing something that, uh, that someone else tells them is, is important and basically because basically the sort of stuck in this uh, in this place of quiet desperation by by the fact that they really have no other alternative uh, it that the world has been made cruel to them by um by the fact that there are so many workers chasing so few uh, jobs that really you sort of have to take what you can get and uh, you know it's, it's especially true in, a, in an economy like today uh, and I and so I, I think that that is partly the fact that there is sort of an uh, I think there's a sense of an artificial scarcity of, of work um, because of the private ownership of natural resources uh, particularly land uh, that the um, that a lot of wealth, which is really everyone's birthright, is sort of siphoned into these private hands uh, and uh, exploited by companies uh, that say, "Oh, you want you want a piece of this pie? Uh, uh, well, come work for us and do what we tell you, and don't you dare think about unionizing or or trying to demand." Uh, Fewer hours or better pay, or something like that. I mean, it's. I think I may be 
being a, being a bit more cynical here than, than necessary, but I mean, yeah, the, the point is it's, uh, yeah, o often people in comparing capitalism and socialism will say that, uh, you know, so the socialism, you know, may, you know, tr strives for egalitarianism, but it neglects meritocracy, you know, because it's, uh, you know, because, you know, capitalism is to reward people for their talents. And, well, I think, um, I, I, I wonder if those people realize that, uh, that a, that a truly meritocratic system would have, would be much more egalitarian than what we currently have. Because so much of the wealth in our current system is based on hoarding of the commons, you know, the, the sort of gouging of, of what, right, uh, of uh, the natural wealth that, that rightfully belongs to society. Um, and so, you know, and, and I think that, that essentially, that natural capital, which rightfully to belong to everyone, can help uh, create uh, financial capital for, a lot, for lots of entrepreneurs to uh, that's a bit, uh, I, I think I think if, if that natural capital were more equitably distributed, uh, that if it were right rightfully um, reinstated into the commons, there'd be a lot less inequality of wealth and more opportunity for uh, individual entrepreneurs to uh, to be able to start their own business and for people to work for themselves or to uh, band together and and working in and co-ops and sort of voluntary forms of socialism. I see that's that's another thing I always had against socialism was sort of the very authoritarian, top-down way that it's it's often implemented. But but I think I have no problem with sort of voluntary forms of socialism and all of worker worker co-ops. And I do agree that that actually our the sort of system of of natural resource ownership we have it actually a um, a setback against uh, such, such forms of production that make uh, that um, that stack the odds against it uh, by by putting you know that what by putting our natural birthrights uh, to the earth in private hands. So um, I guess that's my little spiel for now. Uh, hope you enjoy.